Jamal Musiala, one of world football's greatest dribblers. But how does he consistently get to be two, three, four, even five players at times? It's it's Wolfsburg that have to do something. Bayern really don't have to prove themselves. Although Jamal Musiala just might go through the entire lot of them and score a fourth goal. In this video, I will go into all the basic principles that go into becoming a good dribbler and how you can become a great dribbler. Whether you're a center back or a winger, it doesn't matter. You can apply all these basic principles into your game. That way you can become just like Jamal Musiala. Before we get into the video, I noticed that 98% of my viewers in my last video are not subscribed. So please like, comment, and subscribe and turn on post notifications. It really means a lot and it helps out the channel a lot. Also, it helps me know what you guys want to see next in the next video. And it also helps me bring you guys good quality content. Let's get straight into the video. When it comes to dribbling, I think of four basic principles. These principles are awareness, your change of pace, your reactions, and the end product that you do with the dribble. So to start with, awareness. And away with the ball comes Jamal Muziala. Makes it look so easy. My goodness, Muziala. For me, if you watch Jamal Muziala dribbling, you always see that he's very aware of where he is. Um, also, any top dribbler. They're very aware and they know what time is best to dribble. The first step is always when you're training, scanning before you receive the ball. So in this drill, we train this by adding cones and freestyling where to dribble. If you don't have a partner, use a wall. Before you get receive the ball every time, you need to check your shoulder. And at a certain point, you get the ball, turn, and attack the cone. And then come back and play the ball again. As you can see here, I'm bouncing the ball back one touch and checking my shoulders and making sure I'm aware of where I am exactly on the pitch. Change the draw as needed to fit your specific position if needed. Make sure when it's time to dribble that you explode out and get a little change of pace. The game realistic drills, always make sure you're scanning and you get into the habit of it. That way when you're in a game, you don't even have to think about scanning. Your awareness when you choose to dribble makes the difference between either winning a foul creating an opportunity, or maybe just losing the ball. Before you get the ball and you start dribbling, you need to make sure you know where you are on the pitch, what options you have, and where you can damage the other team with the dribble. It is important to make sure you know when to dribble and when not to dribble. And scanning is the basics of this. So if you cannot scan and you always put your head down, then your dribbling is going to be unintentional. You always have to be intentional with your dribble. The second principle when it comes to dribbling is your change of pace. Many people think that the best dribblers have to be super fast. And you see them like, you know, it's like, it's like you know, just Neymar, like, boom, he's like super fast. That's not true. If you watch dribblers like uh, Bernardo Silva, for example, very good dribbler. But what they do really well is that in these tiny spaces, they have a very good change of pace. And it doesn't have to be like a, a crazy change of pace where you just go from 0 to 100. But it needs to be something that can catch the defender off of his momentum. Especially when you're a winger uh, and you're 1v1, a good change of pace is almost always what you need. It's a little body faint and a change of pace. And then like Jamal Musiala, his trademark is driven to 2, 3, 4 players. And if you notice, it's in those little tiny bursts between player that he beats, he has a little change of pace, whether it's a change of pace left, right, backwards, forwards. And that is how you beat two or three players off guard and you create space. So it will help you improve your change of pace. One, you have to be training in the gym. If you want to get a little bit faster, you have to be training plyometrics and also be training uh, lifting, heavy squats, deadlifts and everything. Another thing that you should add into your change of pace drills is you should add step ladders. Um, that way you can get used to uh, moving from direction to direction and improve your directional movement. On the field though, um, you want to approach a cone. And I have this, and it's going to be set up in the video. So you're going to approach a cone, approach slowly, or in a 1v1. You're going to approach slowly, and then once you get close to the cone, that's when you go from zero so a quick change of pace and then go again and keep trying and keep doing it keep doing it. repeat 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 this will condition your mind to have that change of pace to beat a player on the on the 1v1 and then what you can do after this is you can add another cone so you change the pace to one cone change the pace to another cone change the pace to another cone change the pace to another cone 
And what this is really good for is to visualize the defenders and make sure you can get those tight cuts and those tight reactions. And then this is how I apply it into a game. This is me in a game applying those tight changes of direction. You see, a quick change of direction. I'm not really sprinting. I'm just quick change of direction. You see there, and then change of direction again. And here we see Musiala doing the same thing. And me again doing a quick change of direction, a quick body faint, and boom, exploding out. Here's a great example, body faint and explodes out. Again, all this training should be able to translate into game realistic situations. Here I am again, a little cut, and then boom, change of direction, out. See me, what a brilliant example of that change of pace, touch around, change of pace, boom. This is another very good one. We come in, quick body faint, cut again, another change of pace, and another change of pace. The third principle are reactions. But why are reactions so important? If you notice, when Jamal Musiala is dribbling, he's constantly reacting to what these defenders are doing. You see him, he, I call this the mini touch. The mini touch is when you're dribbling and, uh, and, um, you see that the defender's about to bite, so you 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 beat him, right? But it's, you're not far enough to where you can get an extra advantage off, so he can still win the ball. And when you're reacting to when they reach in for the ball, that's when you touch, take a mini touch. So you take a little tiny touch, as quick as you can, as a reaction, and then to to get away fully, and then that way you fully beat the player. Reactions are really essential when it comes to dribbling. The way we improve this reaction dribbling is one, using the wall. In my last in my last video, you guys saw how the wall really improves your reactions. You guys have to do wall passing and wall juggling. Number two, we're gonna do a similar drill to the reaction drill that we just showed, but this time it's a little bit more different. It's a little bit like taking a touch out. You're kind of reacting to where he is. Always, always make sure if you guys want to improve your dribbling as well. Is when you play in pickup games. Pickup games, try these things. Try your awareness. Improve your awareness. Improve your reactions. Um, take players on. Be confident. What really is gonna these are these are like the basics. This is what's gonna help you transfer into the game. And then when you go play pickup or when you go in training, this is where you actually put it all into practice. So if you have a partner, just freestyle it, you know, let him pass you the ball and press you, and you react to whatever he's doing, okay? And finally, we have end product. End product, honestly, is the most important principle. I think so, mainly because that is what really shows off the, the, the intention of your dribbling. Like I said, you, when you dribble, you have to be very intentional with your dribble. Your dribbling cannot just be for whatever. I know you guys see players like Neymar or whatever, and um, you, you might think they're doing all of these crazy dribblings and they, they, and um, crazy skills, but I promise you they are intentional about those skills. It's not just about, obviously it's about having fun and everything, but those skills and everything that they do, they attract players and they bring players to them and they open space in another way, in another area of the pitch. So when you're dribbling, be intentional about your dribble. Be intentional about your skills. You know, I can attract players here and space will open up to the other side. So end product, by end product, I don't just mean scoring goals or getting assists. I mean by creating opportunities for your team to exploit spaces and create opportunities. The best dribbling drill that you guys can do are 1v1s or even 2v1s. Why? Because that is the most game realistic training that you can do in a small group. When you guys get on the 1v1, try to get an end product, okay? So I know it's hard to win every 1v1, but if you're able to dribble, beat your man, get a shot off. So when you train 1v1s, make sure you train two goal or for a cross or depending on your position or coming out of pressure, holding the player off. All these type of things, they can translate into your position and into the game. 
obviously you add all these other trainings that are on my channel if you guys are subscribed you guys would know that when you add every piece of your training your personal training it should all combine into a complete session if that makes sense like a complete weekly session so one day you can train your dribbling and everything and that all transfers into your, the player that you want to become i hope you guys enjoyed the video um and i hope you guys improve your dribbling if you have guys that have any questions um any suggestions please leave them down in the comments below turn on post notifications it means a lot it helps the channel out a lot and i want to keep making videos for you guys so please help me out guys and i'll help you guys reach the levels that you guys want to reach make a pro and get to the best the highest level you can get to and also follow from so you can keep track of my journey as well so i'll keep you guys updated i'll catch you guys in the next video and i'll see you guys peace